We are Team One. This is the Dungeon Crawler. First, we enter the dungeon. Now to set up the game, we go into DM mode, then select Upload Map. It will then look for a USB connection, then ask you to send the map on the application. This is the Dungeon Crawler app. This screen is where the DM will be able to create the map to send over to the board. But first, let's create some characters. Here, we create a player and name it Neil. By default, Neil is a fighter, but we can change him to be a ranger. We can also set his race, but that is in fact in the base version of the game. We enter in his stats, then save the character. Now, we create a monster named Phil, a human fighter. Unlike players, the DM needs their old initiative for the monsters. Now, we save the character. If you make a mistake, you can load a character and delete it from the list. We have all the characters, so let's create the map. You can place walls, chests, and set hexes back to floor if needed. If you make a mistake, you can always use clear map. We created a map, so now we'll place the characters. Once all characters are placed, we can enter the COM port for the USB device and then send the map. After uploading, you can now view the map. To begin the game, enter playing mode. This will place and initialize all the players, starting with Grace. Her corresponding hex will flash until the token is detected. We confirm the placement. And finally, roll for initiative. Once you enter the initiative, you can check your stats. You can also view your attributes. From either screen, you can return back to the player setup. After all players are initialized, you can start the game. As you can see, it is Grace's turn. On the map, we can see her hex flashing, as well as her visibility. A monster has been spotted, shown by the red hex, so we'll place a token. Because there are two monsters, we'll place another token. It will resume back to Grace's turn. From here, she can choose to move her character, do an action, view stats, or end turn. We will select move. Her available moves are shown in green. We move the token, then confirm the move. There are still move points left over, but we'll choose to attack instead. We can scroll through the available targets shown in the map with flashing hexes. After selecting, we enter an attack roll. It succeeded, so we will roll for damage. When we attack connects, the target's hex will flash. Now it is Neil's turn. We see a chest, so we'll try to open it. We see a monster too, but we'll ignore it for now because we're greedy. We'll select action, and then loot chest. Selecting the chest works like selecting a target for combat. After confirming, we can see the gold we received from the chest and the total gold the character has. After looting, the chest disappears. Since Neil's a ranger, he can do ranged attacks as long as the target is visible. We enter the attack and damage rolls, and we see the path of the arrow hitting the monster. The damage is high enough to kill the monster, so its hex disappears and its token is removed. Monsters are also included in the turn order and are controlled by the DM. We can see here a monster attacking Grace and killing her. Here, we can see Neil killing the last monster. We end Neil's turn, and since there are no more monsters or chests, the players win. Continuing takes us back to the welcome screen, and the game resets.